Hey, there we go. There. There we go. Welcome back to the live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today is June 23rd, 2019, and we're going to write a little bit of code today. I've got my Philadelphia Fusion hat on. My my boys in black were uh were successful yesterday in the in the fight against uh uh, who was it? The Atlanta Rain, right? This was the cable company showdown. Our Philadelphia Fusion yesterday in the Overwatch League. They're in. Uh, they're of course owned in part by Comcast Spectacor, which is owned by NBC Universal. So you got that cable company going up against Atlanta Rain, owned by Cox Communications. In overtime of the fifth game of overtime, they won, and uh, it's great to see that. Good morning, chat room. How's it going over there? I see InstaFluff is here. Good morning, InstaFluff. Good to see you. Kasukin, good afternoon. Uh, thanks so much. For Both of those fellas, as well as there's Carrie Payette. They're friends on the Live Coders team. You can check them out. Click the link for the Live Coders team just below. You can see information about all the great folks that write code live here on Twitch. Louise, uh, yes, uh, right. We're going to be writing code today. I am a software developer. Um, certainly Dev is here. Swings a pocket watch in front of Carrie Payette. <laughs> hey, Sean, good morning. Stelzy's here. Uh, let's see. Who else? You were, you were in Fritz's marquee. Not, which marquee? I didn't have a marquee up, did I? Eh. Um, all right. It's over here, right? It didn't read it. It didn't read it? What mischief? Hey, Svava. Oh, yeah, we're going to have some fun today. We are going to be building... Uh, we're going to be talking more about our uh, scheduling application. We're writing this this application, of course, to help schedule volunteers for a nonprofit organization. We finished a bit of our user interface last time. I'm going to move off of that slightly. It's not quite perfect, but it does what I need it to do for now. And I want to start talking about recurring scheduling. Donuts were mentioned in the loading marquee. Yes, yes, they were. I need to work. Um, so I've actually got some. I've got some new marquees, new screens coming soon um, that all feature the robot. We're going to clean up our user interface a bit here over the next uh, over the next week or two, heading into July. Starting in July, we're going to have a fresh look, and uh, I think we're going to do some things to start enabling giveaways after a certain number of subscribers. So we'll mail out some stickers. We'll do some other fun stuff like that to uh, to make it a little bit more interactive, a little bit more fun here on the stream. Let me get some music code by playing here today. Um, I'm not sure which one to play. Let's play this one, Indigo. There we go. This is, of course, music, music to code by from our friend, Mr. Carl Franklin. It's scientifically engineered. It's designed to get you in the flow, get you in the groove. So whatever task you might be working on, whether it's code, homework, chores around the house, lawn care. For all new nice and shiny interfaces. Yeah. Thank you, Carrie. I really appreciate those 200 bits. We'll make a donation to Veterans Who Code and Twitch. We'll make a contribution to the Trevor Project. And as part of that promo this month, they're going to give three other folks in chat pride emotes. Thanks so much for that. But I want you to check out the music. Carrie just put the link to the music there in the chat room. Music to code by from our friend Mr. Carl Franklin. Check it out or even check out the app musictoflowby.com. You can get free music to listen to just like this. Is that loud enough? I don't think it's loud enough. It doesn't feel loud enough. I'm putting that up way higher than I normally do. Something happened here to my audio levels? It did. There you go. Certainly Dev was listening to MTCB the other day. Nice. There we go. I think that's about right. All right. So. Um, let's talk about, yep, I updated the help command, so it has all the new, all of our new messages in there that you can fire, in, uh, including sound effects from the chat room. There are no longer six different and thens. You can just fire and then it'll randomly choose one, 
and it'll cool down after all six have been used. Ha <laughs> ha! All right. Um, let's head over to... Here we go. We're going to be doing some work over here today. But I want to make sure you see our GitHub repository. And I want to make sure I call out... We are at 6682 followers headed towards that rainbow beard goal. If when that number... If and when that number gets to 8,000 before September 15th, I will dye the my beard rainbow as a salute to you, our followers here on Twitch, uh, for .NET Conf and uh, uh, TwitchCon, of course. We're going to see some of our friends here at TwitchCon. I don't have a hat command yet. The hat command I think we're going to work on in July, and I've got some really neat ideas for that. Um... So we'll we'll dye the beard rainbow. I met InstaFluff at uh, at TwitchCon last year. We were standing in line to register. We're like, hey, how's it go? And we didn't know who each other were, but it was like, all right, cool. We write code online together. Really neat place. If you if you have a chance to go and you do any kind of broadcasting, or even if you just enjoy watching here on Twitch, I encourage you to check it out. Pick up a ticket and head out there. Um. Okay. So rainbow beard. This that. .NET Conf, the call for content, the public call for content starts tomorrow. Folks on folks in several different groups have give, been given a secret backdoor, secret backdoor, so they can submit to the call for content already. Um, so folks like MVPs, Microsoft employees, and even the Live Coders team have access to submit now for commanding all the hats. Thank you very much for that cheer, Kerry. Yes, we will command all the hats. I think we're going to do something really, really cool in um, in July with that. Um, my thinking around that, around the hat concept is uh, I'm going to take pictures of all of them and we'll do some machine learning so that we'll teach we'll use ml.net we'll teach all we'll load it up with all the images of my hats so that well, along with some story or something so we have a data point to go with them and we'll have it identify what hat i'm wearing live i think that'll be really cool you need to do that today with, oh you want to you're gonna go you're gonna go to twitchcon is that what you're referencing it's gonna be amazing we're gonna have so much fun um a bunch of us are putting together some panels for twitchcon uh, .NET Conf, if you're going to submit to .NET Conf, go ahead and get that submission in. But if you're not a member of one of those groups, that's okay. You're going to get the public call for content Monday, and it'll be available for about a month, month and a half. We'll uh, let folks know in beginning of August if they're going to, dot, going to be speaking as part of .NET Conf. Um, and who is that? Drexel Dave was saying, I feel like you want to dye your beard. Just do it already. I I have been dyeing my beard for some events. Rainbow is a little bit extra. It's a little bit more difficult to do. And uh, I'm more than happy to do that as a salute to our friends on Twitch. Um, I've got plenty of purple dye. Drexel Dave, plenty of purple dye. And uh, the rainbow is the one where it becomes a little bit trickier and becomes a little bit more out there. So we'll see. All right, so the project we've been working on, oh my gosh, I, uh, and we have uh, we have two workshops coming up in July, July 12, let, before I get to this, two workshops coming up in July, July 12, Beginners ASP Net Core, and July 19, we're going to do the Blazor workshop. We'll be walking through that. No rainbow beard during Pride Month? Um, no. No, Cartoofer. It, it, it takes a little bit to, to put the rainbow beard in. Um, and that's why I only really do it for events. Can't wait for that. Yeah, cool. It'll be a lot of fun. All right. So we're working on this research met re <laughs> See, that was a little loud. We're working on this resource management application. You know what? I'm going to jump into... Do I have this turned down too far? Let me just take a quick look at this one. I do.
All right, let's try that. Um, so we're working on this resource management application. You can see it right here. Let me post the GitHub link. And the GitHub link, I believe, is just below me here in our GitHub extensions on the wall. This is an application we're building so that we can manage the scheduled volunteers at Sebastian Writing Associates. You can click through and learn more about their therapeutic writing uh, writing facility for for under, uh, disabled kids, underserved youth, folks that, that need a little equine therapy. Um, so we're trying to schedule those volunteers. We've been going through and we build a really neat and simple user interface here using Blazor, HTML, and CSS so that folks can key in their availability and it appears on a user interface here for us. Um, I clicked the button, aren't, aren't you? Thank you. And... Taking its good old time starting here today, isn't it? Isn't it? The year progress bar. Yeah. There we go. So we have this neat little user interface that we built right here. This is all using Blazor. This is HTML, CSS. I can click around here. I don't have a way that it highlights what the currently selected date. We can figure that out. Um, but when you click on one that has something, it places it. It's pretty close. There's a little bit of offset here that's not quite correct. I, but I can click on these and these appear in the appropriate places. This is all being done with um, with a little bit of HTML, CSS, and C Sharp. No JavaScript being used in this. Hey, Lannon, good to see you. So let's, uh, let's head over to this view and let's start talking about not just keying in appointments, but working with recurring appointments. I'm gonna leave this out here, the formatting and the appearance of this, um, and trying to get that placed properly. I'm gonna create that as an issue over here inside of this repository. So that if somebody wants to take a shot at it, somebody wants to contribute, they can um, they can key it in there and uh, yeah, they, they can create it, they can help out with it, and maybe even learn a little bit about it along with us. So this is um, this is the day view day view appointments aren't lined up quite right, uh, aren't positioned. Um, correctly. Um, the appointments, uh, the events later in the day on the day view component are not 100% lined up with their uh, times properly. Also, uh, they don't handle, um, also it doesn't handle um, events scheduled, uh, yeah, off the hour, like uh, 3.30 or uh, 2.45. All right, so I'm gonna mark this as a bug. It's a good first issue and I'll mark it help wanted so that somebody can take a look and, and give it a try if they're interested in helping out with that. All right, let's see. Cool, all right. Chat room is bopping along, very good. So I'm going to continue past this and I want to start talking about recurring schedules. So I'll leave that Firefox up for right now. So we started with this concept a while ago about recurring schedules, right? And these are the things like, well, you know what? I've got, um, I've got different things happening at night that right over. I've got a, uh, I've got bowling league that happens, you know, um, or my kids have uh, soccer practice every Tuesday and Thursday night at this time. So we have a way to store your recurring schedule. And we need a way to define that schedule. We need a way, we already have a way to calculate that schedule. 
but we need a way to reflect and show that schedule appropriately in our user interface as well as, it, as, well as those one-off items that we've allowed folks to key in. So we're going to shift a little bit here. We're going to be able to expand people's schedules and place them on that user interface. Hey, Namazri, good to see you. Hello, hello. Um, <laughs> all right. So um, I have a domain object right now called schedule with that recurring schedule. And a recurring schedule has these objects. Right, so I've got a status, whether you're available or unavailable on that recurring pattern. Um, I have a duration for how wide, how much time from the start, uh, yeah, from the start time, how long each time are you available? So, or not available, whatever the case might be. So this cron pattern uses a standard, a standard Unix cron pattern to be able to play out, uh, to be able to define the recurrence, right? That's a simple string that we we know how to expand and calculate. So I also have a start uh, minimum start time and a maximum end time. What is the duration from what date to what date does that recurrence happen? Yeah, my kid has uh, soccer practice every day after school, so that's from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., um, from September through December. So we need a way to be able to model that, and that's what this domain object does. I have a schedule manager here that right now has basically one feature that it knows how to do, and that's expand schedules. It's going to take that domain object, right, that recurring schedule domain object, and turn it into a collection of what we've called time slots. A time slot, very simple, as a start time, an end time, and a status. This, a collection of these things, is exactly what your real schedule is, right? When you when you actually look at your phone, you look at your calendar, the, the existence of all those things there, that's your schedule. Those are all your time slots. We're just using schedule items, schedule exceptions, and these recurrence patterns to store those things. Someone's at the door. Oh, okay, Surly Dev, hang on. We'll wait for you to come back. Hang on, hang on, Surly Dev stepping away. Hey, Copper Beardy, good to see you. We're just waiting for Surly Dev to come back. Somebody's at the door. I realize I'm playing two sets of music here, and I'm sure that's kind of weird. I didn't read all the context? That's okay. Um, you don't remember joining that club? Yes. How's it going there, President? Not sure. Uh, shouldn't min and max date be nullable? Maybe the user doesn't know them or care in advance. That's a that's a good question, and I'm not quite sure. Oops. Um, worst case, we can make this date time max date. So it's not nullable, but we're going to play it out to the end of time. Right, we're we're not going to set an end time that we want to that we want to expand it out to. So, I think that'll do what I th that'll achieve the same thing as it being nullable and just saying well it doesn't have an end time, and we can then pull it back. Uh, <laughs> okay, here we go. So I have that ability to expand these, and this is a collection of time slots. We're clearly a time slot and a schedule item are very similar, right? A schedule item is just one time slot. So I could have a way to convert from a schedule item to a time slot, right? I mean, time slot, I don't really care about an ID. Um, you know what, I feel like a time slot should have a name that goes along with this, though. So that for those re uh, recurring schedules, when, even when I play those out, I can see exactly what it is there. Yeah. I would have thought that a start time would always be no. Would always be known, even if it's just using the current or a date in the past. Yes. I agree. 
Yep. At the right of at the very worst, the minimum start time is is now. At the very, uh, if you don't know what it is, the minimum start time would be now. Yeah. Let me go back to time slot. Let's put a name on this so that we can make it easy to display what these things are. Um, string. Because when I actually show you, here's the expanded schedule. You're gonna want to see the name on there so that you know why that time slot is blocked or is appearing the way it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, which means they want to go to the schedule manager and I build out time slots. I need to make sure I carry that name into it, right? Um, da -da -da -da. So here's the error scenarios. Let me look at the logic here and let's get the... Here we go. New time slot. And yeah, so let's put a name on this. Uh, nope. Get the next occurrences. Is it R? No, hang on. R? Yeah, there we go. All right, so I've got the recurring pattern there. Schedule items, I need to copy that in. And So now all my schedules have that name. I don't think I'm handling schedule exceptions yet in here when I built this logic. Am I? No. No, I'm not. Um, I gotta remember that. Right? Um... <laughs> Adding authentic some consideration for security threat model we need to talk about once we get past minimum viable and getting some features working. Um, all right, so I need to add uh, handle uh, schedule exceptions in um, what's this called? Schedule manager when calculating schedules uh, need to remove. Um, recurrences or schedule items when a schedule exception overlaps. So this is a bug. This is not a good first issue. Um, but I'll definitely mark it help wanted. This is a little bit curious logic here. So, um, okay. I think that that's all I need to do right now in here. But what I will need to do is I wanna bring that schedule manager into my view, into my user interface here. Uh, there we go, fix that. So that, so that I can allow folks to key in their recurring schedule and make it now appear on the calendar. Automatically remove them, Surly Dev. So uh, let me go back. Let me just talk about that briefly so that we're all on the same page here. So when you calculate somebody's schedule, right, we're going to have, we're going to have a, uh, right, here's all of the, uh, the dates for, right, for soccer practice after school. Here's all of the uh, doctor's appointments that have been scheduled, and those are one-off things. Someone's haircut, somebody's, uh, you know, whatever appointments, um, nail appointment, I don't know. And there's going to come a point where you're going to say, okay, so that's all my schedules from September through December, but you know what? We need to punch a hole. We need to create a schedule exception for the weekend in November that is uh, American Thanksgiving. So we're going to create that schedule exception for that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Doesn't matter what what that recurrence is of soccer practice. There is no soccer practice on, um, there, I'm not available at all. So uh, for those four days. So that schedule exception needs to be placed into it and, and remove those conflicts. So it's not, 
it's not a um, it is an overlap that that changes the structure of the recurrence pattern right it inter it interrupts it at some point during the um, during the expansion so on top of an individual person seeing their own schedule is there a plan for a manager to view all the schedules yes that's one of the next points after we finish the ability to get it to display here then we'll have the ability to look across everybody's schedule and see how many people are available on each day at each time slot and that's going to be a whole nother kettle of fish yes Lennon so that'll help with scheduling right so we need manager view manager or uh, yeah it's called manager view need to be able to view um, number of available well let's just call it manager view a manager needs to be able to view the schedule and see how many employees are available in each time slot um, are available each day and further how many are available um, for a given for a proposed class uh, to be scheduled So that is a that is a feature. I'm not going to mark it as help wanted, but I'm going to just label it as enhancement because this is going to take a little bit of definition and expansion on exactly what manager view is and how to get that entire perspective across. A lovely big grid. I think you're right, Surly Dev. Yeah. Oh, are you opening the can of worms of official holidays, which are everywhere these days? On other um, at some point at some point um, and for minimum viable this is at one location and we'll be able to focus and say just load in in this case uh, the American uh, the American holidays we'll cross some of those other things as we get past the minimum viable right I, I want I just need to get to be able to schedule people so uh, the deepest domain model must be from Outlook yes I do not have access to the source no but that domain model, and we can model it, we can get pretty close to it, is definitely there in, in Outlook or Google Calendar. Um, take your pick of calendar solution, but Outlook has a pretty good one. This is my last cup of uh, black on Blackberry G Fuel today. It's, uh, it's treated me well these last few months. I've enjoyed it. So, um, good, okay. Nobody's misbehaving in chat room. I need to auto moderate there. All right. Um, so yes, we're gonna have that view at some point. Do I still have? Don't need that really. All right. Um, so I think we've. I don't need the schedule exceptions yet, but I need those time slots. I need to start converting things to time slots for presentation on the screen. Um, so, in my availability over here, we're going to convert this now. I'm receiving my database context here, and I'm going to need to convert that to, to time slots, to a collection of time slots. Output those time slots, store them somewhere in memory. Mm, store them somewhere in memory so that I can position them on the user interface properly. Okay. That's not too bad, right? Um, aren't there APIs or databases out there that can tell you when there are holidays in a certain region? Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right, Stelzy, there might be. Um, let me take note of... Um, uh, need to consider um, federal official holidays in schedule. 
Um, perhaps there should be a facility schedule that can have these um, these dates applied. Uh, is is there a an API that we can use to load these directly without storing yeah in our database? Nah, I think we probably should. We can load these directly into our database on a regular basis. Um. That is an enhancement. A market is help wanted because it's a little bit. Fr no, no, I didn't want to close it. I thought I was clicking the comment button. Um, how am I handling different time zones? That's past minimum viable. Time zone is is not an issue yet. I'm storing everything in local time for now. We'll expand that to carry a time zone for these folks at some point. Right, because my schedule, right, if you look, so my schedule, this is the top level object that all of my information about my schedule hangs off of. Um, I could specify a time zone as a property of my schedule somewhere here and enforce that on all the times that are descendant from this. And that's the time zone for my schedule. Is the time that we could run into an issue though with time zone being effectively dated from right if somebody's a snowbird perhaps right the, you're familiar with the concept of a snowbird somebody uh, lives in Florida right or a warmer climate for from October through April May and uh, June through September they live up north in in Pennsylvania Boston that type of thing still in the same time zone but maybe maybe it's not florida maybe it's phoenix maybe it's arizona so they're in a different time zone returned my shoes thank you for the follow welcome so it, it's yes oh I, I know brazil and some other regions have some very interesting time zones very interesting indeed but that's a complexity that i don't want to spend a lot of time on right now Right, we'll be able to add that on to our schedules and our schedule management because I've isolated that business logic. We'll be able to handle that at a later time. Um, all right, so I have... Do I expand the schedule once when you navigate into here and keep it hanging around in memory for this person? I don't want to... Or do I cache it somewhere? I don't know. Um, I want to put those time slots somewhere that makes sense. Why don't we do this? In, under data, um, let's create an expanded schedule object. And inside of this, um, let's put a collection of time slots that's that's better. This way I can put in for in startup I can stash it here, right? So now I can expand your schedule, put it in one place here, and it will be available for me as I wander around. As I add new schedule items, I can just recalculate the schedule and, and put it back in the thing there. I think that'll work. So, when do I expand the schedule? Well, maybe when you enter the availability view. There it is. 
So on a knit. So I've got your schedule here. I need to inject the schedule manager object here. Or actually, now I well I can new it up. I don't need to create one, do I? And when I expand a schedule, I need to give a start time, end time. I don't quite know how far I want to expand it yet. Maybe I should just expand it for this month and next month. Um, so let's create one new schedule manager. Right, it doesn't know what that is. So I need a using statement for this, right? Really? Thank you. Oh, it doesn't even have a reference to that yet. Uh -huh -huh -huh. Add a reference, shared project in the solution. What? Okay, there it is. All right, that should light up now. Come on, come on, thank you. Um, all right, so I've got new schedule manager, so now I should be able to say, oh, I've also got to inject the object, don't I? Uh, all right, at inject uh, data, why is it putting an extra space there? Expanded schedule, and let's just call this expanded schedule. All right. Um, expanded schedule dot add time slots, add range, manager expand schedule. I'm going to pass in my schedule. Um, and let's give it a. Do I have this month here? No, I don't have this month. But I could expand, I could go back like a month and go forward two months or something like that. Hey, Rambling Geek. Right. So, uh, last month um, is it's a new date time. It's going to be well, I can get the, hang on. This month would be new date time and it's going to be um, Selected date dot year, right? Uh, selected date month one. Uh, well, that'll be this month. So now I can easily calculate the start date. If I go back a month, is going to be this month dot add add months minus one. If I want to go forward two months, it's going to be this month dot add months. I'm going to add three. If I want to go forward two months, because it's the first of the month, I'll have to go forward three months, so it includes both next month and the following month, but not the month after that. Um, add range. I think that's all of it, right? Did I get all my parentheses correct? So that's the end of that one. That's the end of expand schedule. That's the end of the add range. That's one too many. All right. I think that's right. So now my expanded schedule has all the dates in it. Good. Have I use, ever used Nota Time? Yes. Quite familiar with it. We had our friend um, John Skeet on. And uh, yeah, we learned a lot about that. That was about a year and a half ago we had John on. You can find that video on the YouTube collection. It is, it's pretty good stuff. Um, but I don't think it does some of these date calculations as far as intersections and things. Um, yeah. All right. So I have that now sitting in my expanded schedule. I need to now pass that. I'm doing the cascading value things here to try and put them into my date picker. Right. Um, in my day view, but I'm not actually receiving them as cascading parameters anymore.
The man, the myth, the legend. Yes. He was on uh, he was on stream with us. Um and we were writing a we were writing a data management not data content management application called CoreWiki. We haven't touched that project in a while. Um but we were working on that and we had to manage the presentation, the fetching and storage of dates properly. Yeah, that was that was a long time ago. That was early in the early in the, the life of the uh, the stream. So we might have him back at some point. Yeah, thank you. There you go. Landon's got the link to the video that we did with John. Um, there's all kinds of nuggets and, and fun folks that we met and we've had on the stream. Uh, Julie Lerman, John Galloway, Shane Boyer. Um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. So, um, okay. So I'm not passing the expanded schedule around, but I am passing now that expanded schedule around so I can say inject really uh, data expanded schedule and we'll call it expanded schedule there we go um, so now when I plot and I'm, I'm setting up so that when I have my recurrence patterns when I start saving those it'll show all of those dates properly but the expanded schedule Instead of going through my schedule here, I'm going to go through expanded schedule. So has appointment, right? So instead of that, I'm going to change this to expanded schedule. Any that has a right? Come on. Uh, oh, wait, it's time slots. Any, right? Because that's a collection. Uh, there we go. Everything just works. Um, <laughs> that still works. Good. All right. So nothing else there really changes in the day picker. But on the day view, we need to receive that same expanded schedule object. And then we'll start talking. I did it. We'll start talking about keying in and storing this information. So I need to receive that. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. What's the first framework I should learn after I'm comfortable with .NET, Razor, Blazor, WCF, or WPF? Asks Frankus. Frank. Uh, Frank? Is it Frank? Or is it Frank as? Let me know how you pronounce your name. Um, oh, you don't have to put a number at the end. Landon, it'll just randomly find one. Frank us. Okay, Frank us. Um, so once you learn and you're comfortable with .NET, um, Razor will give you a lot of the foundation for Blazor. So I would look at Razor before Blazor. And then? Yeah. Yes. Um, I would consider WPF if you're going to be doing any, any desktop applications for Windows. Uh, WCF, I would no, I would not learn right now. Um, only if you're supporting a legacy application, um, something that's been around for a while, I would not. Uh, uh, I would not learn WCF. I would not go out and, and purposefully spend time learning it right now. Uh, Rob Va Rob Van He, thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us, and I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Um, so I would, I would focus on Razor and Blazor because you can use that same web technology um, to, to grow and build applications now that run inside of Electron. Because Blazor is a, right, is a client-side technology that will run inside of a, an Electron app like, like Slack, uh, Visual Studio Code. Inside that framework, you can build and work with that. So, so you're saying get the razor out and trim up before you sport that blazer? Wow, Lannon! I woo. Lannon's got it right there. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, sixty-six eighty-four. Are we gonna get to uh, sixty-seven hundred followers today? I think we're gonna get there. There you go, Frankus. Yeah, Badum Tish. I it should it be Badum Tish or should it be Rimshot? Because, right, they call that a rim shot. 
Um, and I feel like I'm giving more of my my soundboards to you to be able to play. Um, because there's a bunch of them out there. Sean votes for Rimshot. Okay. We can we can make that a thing. I'm gonna take that as an item on my notepad here. Uh, need to add rim shot uh, command to Fritz stream tools. We can make that happen. That's actually pretty easy to add. Rim shot sounds rude to me. Oh, uh, oh dear. I seem to have minimized everything. <laughs> Oops. Hang on. Come on, open everything back up. It didn't want to just open everything back up for me. Uh, I need that. And this one. Alright, now I can see everything again. Uh, it is the official name for it. Eh. Eh. It's a drummer's thing. Okay. Um, so now I'm, I've got the expanded schedule being inserted into my day view. And so here, instead of right doing my for each across my schedule, I'm going to go across expanded schedule. Not schedule items, but time slots. And that should still work for that for loop. On and it, my schedule on select date change. That's fine. That's fine. All right. So now my user interfaces are updated to be able to handle and work with recurring schedules when I have recurring schedules saved into the database. Now comes the fun part. Let's let you create some recurring schedules. Oh, I should also clear up some of these extra... Um, Right, some of these extra little things that I put here just so that we could test and be able to see some data before visualizing it. So I'm just going to comment out that view there. Zero, just subscribed. Uh, welcome, Joe. I, I'm, I'm not going to say your full name. But I'm going to keep this family friendly, but welcome, Joe. I appreciate you joining us here on the channel, and thank you very much for the subscription. We'll make a donation to Veterans Who Code. Just like we do with uh, all of our uh, cheers and subscriptions, we're going to support veterans who code this quarter. Thank you very much. Art for the apocalypse. Listening to my dulcet coding tones while ironing your laundry. See that? Look at that. That's, that's one way to pay attention to the stream. Thank you. Thank you, Art. Great to see you. Um, love, love Imperial's uh, emotes there. Uh, recently set up a GitHub page. Want to start your portfolio? Would puzzle, puzzle projects, puzzle solvers be good first projects? That's not a bad idea, Frankus. Um, I and thank you for the follow, as well as a fake chicken robot. Thank you very much for the follows. Um, I would consider those as pretty good first projects to write as you're starting to build a little bit of a portfolio. Because that's somewhere that you can point back to and say, I wrote some of this code. Here's an example of what I'm able to write. That's not too bad. Yeah. That subscription audio was really low. It was really low. Um, it's really low underneath of... There we go. Thank you, Fossils, for pointing that out. So I'm receiving the expanded schedule. It's just a little bit hot. Just a little bit hot. It's on this one. All right, let's see how that works. The levels that themselves are pretty low. Laptop is cranked up already. Okay. How's that? There we go. I try to keep the volume in the background. There we go. Uh, 
All right. Um, so now I'm receiving and I'm placing those. Oh, I, w I was trying to clean up some of the extra little, there you go, things like my the selected date is. Let's get rid of that. And I can actually turn that into um, the, the, make the selected date something highlighted here in the user interface, right? So that you know what the selected date is below. This is the month. When you click on one, I should probably leave it clicked so that you can see it below, you know? Um, so on click, select date this day, but I, I also want to mark that, mark that element with a, with an extra class to indicate what it is and remove the class from another one. Now you have to turn down your audio kappa, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't quite know how to do that just yet. Let me take that as an issue so that we come back to it. Where'd it go? Not that. I had another Firefox. And it wasn't that one. Wow! No. I had another Firefox open. There it is. Uh, new issue. Um, need a... Uh, need to highlight the date clicked in the month view. I don't really need to... Um, I'm going to mark that as a... Yeah, it's a logical bug. Help wanted, good first issue. So, um, I'm going to give folks an opportunity to, to contribute and, and build some of these things here. All right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So, I'm going to... You know what? Let's leave this one here for now. All right. Let's go back to availability. So right now, availability, I don't need these either, I don't think. Let's see what that looks like now that I've done all these different things. Yep, the Git book Kindle edition is free. They want folks to get better at, at doing Git, interacting with it. Um, time slot does not contain a definition for duration. Ah, good point. Well, time slot duration is actually, we could calculate that. We could add a property for that, right? Um, that's a time span. Uh, duration. It's a get only. And we're going to return end date time, subtract start date time. Right, and now we have a duration. And that should build properly. Um, I do have an, an open invite out to, and, and we were very close to scheduling with Phil Hack to join us to talk about GitHub and Git for newbies. Um, but we had a, a scheduling issue there. I'm going to go back to, I need to call Phil back. And he actually has a, um, a book to promote now about Git for beginners. Um, so where are we here? All right, we're about halfway through. I want to also make sure that I, I share this announcement. Uh, schedule for next week. We're going to change now for the summer months. I'm going to go back to Tuesdays being my late, uh, my late day. And Thursday, I'll be back at 10 a.m. normal time like I'm here today. Um, but this Tuesday night, my I'm going to have two guests joining us um, Michaela Hutchinson and Cody Beyer from the Visual Studio for Mac team will be joining us and showing us all the cool new features that were released for Visual Studio for Mac just last week. And we're even gonna we're gonna build a little Android. We're going to do some work with um, with the, the, uh, which application is it? Remember, Jeff, you have to write some code here still. We're gonna do some work with the uh, distributed chatbot application using Android that we're going to build live inside of Visual Studio for Mac. So I hope you join me Tuesday night where we're going to talk about Visual Studio for Mac. I should put an event out for that. Uh, create an event for Tuesday with VS for Mac. And I also need to finish, I need to finish an API for that.
need to finish writing code for my own shows. You know what I'm saying? All right. So let's check the availability. Let's see, make sure this still works. No, it doesn't. Expand schedule, my schedule. Where is this bloating up, blowing up? Resource management web, stack trace. Show me that stack trace. Um, that doesn't tell me anything. Uh huh. My schedule. Okay, my schedule's a thing. Um, this month that that's a thing. Okay. Man is manager not manager's a thing. Expanded schedule is a thing, but time slots are not. Ah. Oops. Let's initialize that as a thing here, so there's something there. You could make this read only, so you can't overlay it. Let's do that. Right, so you can add and edit stuff on the list, but you can't just replace the entire list. Git is a thing that looks very complicated, but you only need a couple of commands to know what to do. Most everyday stuff, the rest is learned as the need arises. Yes, and you know what? So here's the here's the great thing about Git, and I want to make sure that I, I share and that that we talk about on stream. Um, come on, tell me that user interface works. Um, Git manages text files, so whether you're managing code, you're managing documents, you're managing things that some of our creative friends work on, they're usually just text documents to be able to have source control, free source control for some of those documents would actually be really helpful and um, something that be able to share and get a free website out of on GitHub is actually a pretty cool thing. So it might be it might be fun to um, when we when we talk with Phil to not just talk about code for Git storage. Uh, Nalaj asks, "Am I based in Seattle?" No, I'm in I'm in the Philadelphia region. In fact, you can f I have a shipping address just below here. With a, with a P.O. box, if folks want to send me anything, you want to send me stickers, you want to send me send me a hat to wear here on stream, you can send stuff to the P.O. box just below here. Zavana. Um, the repository for this is right there. You want to send me money like Plutonian is suggesting? Sure, you can send me money. That's quite fine. That, absolutely, you can do that. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say no. If you want to send me money, you can you can PayPal me things a heck of a lot easier. Um, so I'm going to clean up this schedule appointments area here because this right was how we were first outputting the data right here behind my noggin, um, just so that we could get a user interface, something to show. Well, here's what's keyed in. I can remove these now because now they appear over here, right? Um, so I'm going to remove these and I want to start adding, I want to add another block here so that we can add, uh, what's it called? So we can add uh, recurring schedule items. You prefer sending cash by post. Nice. Nice. Thanks so much. <laughs> I do. So what I'm thinking now that we've got a little bit of a quorum here, what I'm thinking is I've got a huge collection of stickers. Right? So, right, there you go. Like the Octocat emote, our cool bot, and of course, Clippy. So, uh, what I'm thinking is starting in July, I can, um, we can set up, right, other folks have a, have a thing where after so many uh, resubs, they'll, they'll send out a sticker pack uh, randomly to someone in channel. I'm thinking we can start doing that. And uh, it, right, I've also got stickers here for the .NET bot, where he's just hanging out playing games. Um, I've got the Super C Sharp stickers, of course. The the other .NET bot stickers. I've got I've got a lot of stickers. So be able to send them out in an envelope. Yeah, stickers, absolutely. Am I handling schedule conflicts yet? 
Not yet. We're just managing one person's schedule. We'll get to schedule conflicts. And actually, there's not just schedule conflicts. Eventually, we do want to be able to see those schedule overlaps because I want to be able to see five people are available at this time. Great. Well, I need three people to run a class so I can schedule a class at that time and assign those with three of those five people to to help run that class. Gonna write cocaine drop off point 50, 50 kilos on it. Nice. You you do know that Philadelphia, my my hometown here, Philadelphia, had a significant cocaine bust just this week. It was tremendous. Um, I need a. Um, Yeah, uh, uh, I'm remembering other things here that I need to do. There we go. Sounds like a party. Yeah, that's that's the goal, be able to schedule a party. <laughs> All right, so let's remove these and let's start adding another section here for creating a recurring schedule. Uh, now, how am I going to book a party like it's 1999 with a... I know, Binaz, I know. Right? That's that's a problem. Um, and you blow it! They blew it. Big tanker truck and a billion dollars worth of cocaine. Busted. Busted. So, um, don't ship cocaine in tanker trucks. Okay? Alright. Um, let's see here. So, let's remove this. But everything's working here. I mean, it loads up and presents properly on screen. I think... Everything is awesome. It is. It worked. Um, Carrie just, like, went bonkers because that that was one of our favorite things to taunt each other with was that song. Back in the day. Um, availability. You'll pipe it in through pipes then. There you go. Sure. <laughs> it is a lot. Binaz, it's a lot. Um, all right, so let me go. Where was it? Here, this UL where it was just outputting the schedule items. We can get rid of this now. Don't need that anymore. Um, scheduled appointments. No. Set the availability. I don't have scheduled appointments here. I think that's okay. And wait a sec. So div class row goes to here on the availability, and I have four across. This should be like six across because I still have this over there. And that's a completely different thing, and it's next to each other. I don't think I want to put these on this at all. Right? I want them to display side by side next to each other. So maybe I make it like this. And I put another one over here. Okay. And we do recurring, um, create a recurring schedule. Um, pipes and tubes, the same thing. Well, if you ask Ted, uh, Senator Ted Stevens, uh, the, the late Senator Ted Stevens, yes, they are, and they make up the internet. Um, e cocaine. Oh man, that's what World of Warcraft is. Not G fuel. G fuel is just amazing. It's a wonderful, amazing thing. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Just take a peek before we go and write some code here. Uh, oh, look at that. Okay, Mordecai's already got some links for us for the schedule. Cool, thank you. Um, Rise Git Tutorial has more ratings than Pro Git. Okay. You thought Twitch was e-cocaine. Nah. Nah, not quite. All right, so a recurring schedule. Um, I don't need this. We may need that. Day view, I don't need to do anything more with schedule item. No. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. 
uh, a recurring schedule has the schedule ID that it's wired up to. Oh, we're going to need to create some navigation patterns here, aren't we? So that we can access and load these when we load our schedules, because right now we don't. Nalaj asks, by any chance am I sponsored by G Fuel? No, but G Fuel, if you're watching, we've got a completely different market here that you're not targeting. And, uh... Hang on, should I should I set something up here? Car is Carrie still there? Carrie... Is she, is she here? I don't see her. I think she left. Yeah, C Payette left. Oh, but Robert Tables is here. Hey, Robert, good to see you. I feel like I should do a clip to to give my pitch for why G Fuel should sponsor me. Um, Cokeheads, no. Um, only been here a month, and I would be interested to see if I could find stats on what I've watched. Suspect you'd be horrified. What? No. Never. Calling out lurkers. No, I'm not calling out lurkers. I'm just, I'm looking to see. I was going to say, if I wanted to call out lurkers, I'd call out Svava. Did I do that? <laughs> no. Um, if I were to, if I were to make a pitch to G Fuel, yeah, I would, my big focus would be that we've got a lot of folks that are watching here that uh, participate and um, we're always talking about how wonderful G Fuel is each time that we're here. So, I wouldn't mind sticking their logo in the box over there, giving folks a little bit of a discount code. They could go and order some. We did give some away on stream a while ago. That was kind of cool. Um, so, I need to add... I don't have it here. Do I need to add the reverse navigation? From my schedule. Schedule items. Did I... Put it in... Right, I want to make sure that I'm... Um, I'm configuring my data here properly. Person has one schedule, and I am able to get the schedule items. So I should be able to get the... Recurring schedules coming back. Talking about drink that I need a caffeine boost. Yeah, Copper Beardy. Am I working off the dev branch? Asks Surly Dev. I have a fork... A forked copy. Um, and I haven't pushed my changes back over there recently. And that's not a... You know what? That's not a bad idea. Let's... Let's share my changes. So that everybody can be on the same page at this point. Because I think... I think I'm okay. Right? We haven't made any changes yet that are going to break things yet. Right? So if I run and I'm on this feature schedule UI branch is where I'm working. Um, da, 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 yeah. And I've got the expanded schedule object. So I'm going to do a git add. I know you shouldn't really do that, but um, it's my project. I can do it if I want. Um, so uh, completed initial uh, UI for schedule items. And I will commit that. Cool. Push that to my copy of the repository. Right? Let's go. Thank you. Um, all right, I should be able to go over here. Yep, compare and pull request. And I want to push that not into master, but into this schedule UI branch where we're working on the schedule user interface. Um, right, completed initial... Uh, completed initial schedule item user interface create that pull request I know it's heresy to add the dot yep merge merge alright so now if you pulled from the schedule UI branch feature scheduled UI that's where we're working you'll now have a copy of everything that I'm working on to date over there when we finish the feature, we'll push it into dev, make sure that it tests and works properly, and eventually push out to master, which will be our production area. So, all right. Um, back over here. So I think I can pull back all the recurring schedules when I'm on the availability page. When I fetch the data, 
here it is. Get my availability. So right now we're including schedule items. I think I need, if I do a then include, is that gonna be on schedule item? Yeah, it's on schedule item. Um, can I do include? And it wants the navigation path from person. Memo U2. Memo underscore U2 just subscribed. Thanks so much for that sub. I really appreciate that. And we'll make a donation to Veterans Who Code. Um, da, 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 da. Um, President, not sure. There's a, a an encouragement from folks not to use git add dot because you might include things that aren't aren't necessarily supposed to be committed as part of uh, your set of changes, right? You may have accidentally included some other things. Um, <laughs> Echo Strike says the link below stream link links to my fork rather than the Fritz and Friends. Not sure which one you'd want to work off of for contributions. Ooh, good point. Thank you for picking that up, Echo Strike. You know what? Let me change that real quick. Very well done. Let me let's do this. I'm going to um, if I open extensions, I'll bring this over so you can watch me configure it in just a second. So, where is it? The Git projects. GitHub projects. This extension, of course, is written by our friend Talk to Me Gooseman. He's another one of the live coders. So, I'll click configure over here. You can watch, you can learn more about Talk to Me Gooseman stream in the uh, live coders team below. So, resource management, yeah, that points to this project. Yep, good. Um, we need to edit this. I want to. No, that's not what I wanted to do. Stop. Stop. Uh, back. Okay, here we go. Um, refresh my repositories. Make sure it has all the right things here. <laughs> okay. Turn that one off, and I'm looking for Fritz and Friends resource management, and I don't see it. I see a lot of things here. There should be another one in there. Oh, it's over there. Okay. No. What? It should be here. I gotta. I really, I've gotta go searching for it. Yeah. Where is it? No, it's not here. There's Stream Deck Toolkit. Cheer Graffiti. We haven't worked on Cheer Graffiti in a while. Oh my goodness. I don't see it here. I ran into this problem before. When I was doing the Azure DevOps. I've got so many projects here. This is ridiculous. You know what I mean? Um, I did the refresh. It should have appeared. You know what I mean? Control F. Um, that's what I did. Fritz and friends. Yeah, it's not there. It's not in the box. Why isn't it in the box? And, and I'm totally leaning into that accent. Yeah. It's not appearing. That's... Yeah. It's not found at all. Hmm. Right? If I do that, it finds that one. It's not there. Uh, look, now it's got no repository selected. Uh, uh, and this one, and that one, and that one. I'll set those for right now. Yeah, it's my fork, but you can walk up the fork to the, uh, to the main one. It's weird that it's not there. That's fine. All right. I'll have to talk to Eric and see if there's something I'm doing wrong there, but it's not up here. 
Um, yeah, it's under the Fritz and Friends organization, but I have stuff appearing there. Learn from uh, Illuminated Space about git add dash dash patch. Interactive prompt to go through the changes. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know about that one either, Lannan. Yeah, Illuminated Space just joined, uh, joined the team about two weeks ago, maybe? So, yep, 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 yep. Um, all right, so if I need to do another include here, can I, do I include the schedule twice? What? Right, do I do that again? So I can say s dot, uh, recurring schedules. Does that work? Let's see what happens. Um, no, I don't want to use the, that username, Echo Strike, because then it won't show my projects. Build errors, of course. We just added duration to time slot. I just added that, didn't I? There it is. Try again. Rebuild. Recalculate the thing. Because it's there. I know it is. No. What? Warning, warning. Where's the error? Unclosed div tag with no matching end tag. There's that, there's that. I bet you that's what it was and it got confused. Yeah, are you kidding? That didn't make sense at all. All right. Let's see if it loads the data properly still. Be even though I'm doing this weird extra include here. Because that extra include doesn't feel right. Right, does it res does Entity Framework resolve that properly? Um, that's not how I wanted it to look. But it, okay, it's working doesn't look good but it's working um, so that's set to inline block so that this should go next to it um, let's make this height right uh, yeah the uh, compiler errored out on HTML that's weird can somebody clip that so maybe we can follow up with with somebody from the uh, Visual Studio team let's see if I just get that lined up properly. I should have done this in CSS while the browser was up. Um, <laughs> come on, come on. And open the availability. No, didn't work. All right. Let's do a little CSS. So this div this one where we're going to key in our stuff I want this thing it says height 100% and it's not doing it hmm. thank you thank you rambling geek I'm going to grab that link uh, error report on that um, all right. Maybe I take the availability and my schedule here. I, I have them set as inline block. They should be next to each other, side by side, is what I want. Um, but maybe, maybe I turn this into a row and I have this one be six and then this one be six, six columns. Or maybe one of them is eight and the other one is four. 
Yeah, I think I want to... Let's make them 8 and 4. Right? So, there's this one and that one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, if we do that, get rid of this. Go way down here somewhere. Put that in there. And... I can then get rid of this one. This didn't work, so I don't need that either. Uh, right, I can make this uh, call medium. Let's make it eight. Put the thing in there. There we go. So this one where I'm going to show your schedule. Right, this is the other half of that in that same row. I don't need the inline block there. But I can put class call md4. Uh, uh, summer games done quick is starting today. Ooh, nice. Speed running event. Very nice. Um, you can also call git add i to go into that patch mode, which is what you've been experimenting with. Neat. Very cool. Hey, Benjin. Hello. Welcome. Um, all right, so that should fix that layout. So create a recurring schedule here. So a recurring schedule, let's put a, let's create a recurring schedule item. Uh, new recurring schedule. All right. Um, if I'm resetting the schedule items, Equal, uh, no. New recurring schedule. Cool. Equals, uh, new recurring schedule. Yeah, that's it. Um, well, we should probably set the, uh, min start date is, uh, date time today. Um, Max end time equals, let's set it to, uh, add days seven. By default, it's seven days long. We'll make the, re the default recurring schedule. I also need to, need to, I also need to set the schedule ID. Now, wait a sec. Schedule item has schedule ID in here. Does recurring schedule have schedule ID? It does. So I want to make sure that that foreign key relationship is set up properly, right? Um, I thought, yeah, I guess it is set up properly. All right. Maybe it did it automatically for us. Right, so when we add a new recurring, when we save it here, Ah, uh, we set the schedule ID there. Um, all right, that's fine. When we save this, we'll put one of those in there. So let's start setting up some fields for a recurring schedule. Just as data as text fields, we'll figure out a, something as a richer control as we go along here. Um, uh, can you whine about your job? Um, as long as you do it in a family-friendly way, I don't mind. But uh, we're not going to fawn over you. But sure, if you'd like to, you're you're welcome to. Um, I'm gonna put the same field names here. Name of the uh, recurring um, appointment. And this will be new recurring schedule name. This will be... Right? The names don't really matter here because I'm binding to it. Right? Min start date time. Max and date time. So I've got those. But I've, I also need to have the recurrence pattern. For right now, let's, let's do that as text. Did I spell that right? Recurrence? Ah, whatever. Let's just, and that's, that's a bad name. Let's just call it pattern. 
uh, bind it, and we're going to bind it to new recurring, new recurring schedule. Uh, really, really. There it is. Uh, cron pattern is what it's called. Let's put a placeholder. Um, and let's put a cron pattern for schedule. I want to, I just want to get the crud operation working. Get it saving that properly. No, we don't use that version of Blazor yet. Um, and then I need a button at the bottom. Copy and paste so I don't have to key it all in. Add new recurring schedule. Okay. So I, I'm going to create that method, and I should be able to steal, steal, um, just about this entire syntax. I haven't been marking some of the, the cheers here, only because the cheers have been coming in while I'm not writing code. Um, but I need to make sure I keep up with that. All right, all right, add new. So it'll be uh, new recurring schedule. Um, yep, not available. Set the schedule ID. Schedules update my schedule. My schedule, um, right, recurring schedules, add new recurring schedule, save that, mark that the schedule's been updated. Well, now, not only am I, do I need to mark schedule's been updated, but I need to also recalculate the time slots here. Right, when that, when that save happens, I need to recalculate um, so I should clear no time slots clear schedule manager isn't a thing down here it's a lightweight object so I'm okay with creating a new one every time I need to do this so we also want to do that here when we save these objects. I can pull that out into a common method here. And I'm not, yeah, yeah, that'll be fine. I could pull all of these out into a common method. I'm not worried about it yet. So hopefully that should work. Uh, Rath ZA asks, how do you test in Razor? Um, you don't really test in Razor. Razor is a right user interface formatting. You're not, it's not something you're typically going to test. It's something that you, um, right, that's more of an integration test. These things that we're doing here, if I wanted to unit test, I would want to put into a, a separate model object and have all of those methods in management over in that model object and that object, that view model object that is doing that, you could test. There is a way, yeah, the functions block. Um, <laughs> right, there is a way to specify a view model for Blazor. No, no, uh, no. Uh, is it in this, that's 2018. But there is a, a view model you can put behind it. Yeah, Blazor view model. And I forget the class you inherit from. Uh, no. No, that's not it. No, 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 no. You're your components can inherit from a no that's not what I want either. Um, your blazer components can inherit from a um, 
from a class. Is it here? No. Don't let me distract. Squirrel! No. It's okay. This is something that we're going to run into here. And we should consider as this is growing a little bit larger. There is a way to do the code behind and we need to know how to do it. Um, where is it? Where is it? Component, component, component. Capturing events using at key. No. Lifecycle component disposal. No. Base class inheritance with code behind. There we go. Component base. Yeah, and you inherit from it. So you can have a class that inherit that that is right, they call it this component uh, base. So that you can write to that. CJ Aliaga just resubscribed for ten months. Proud of what you are doing, Jeff. Keep it going. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that sub. That's great stuff. We'll make another donation to veterans who code here. And uh I really, I, gosh, I, I appreciate all of our subs. That's great, great stuff. Um, yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. And we will keep it up. Oh, yeah. Um, and I do, I, I need to do things like, I'm going to, I got to take this, um, I need to do the one year sub gift. Make sure that all the folks who have subscribed for a year get some sort of a little gift. I have an idea what I want to do, but I need to figure out how to put that together and get it sent out to folks that would like the one-year sub gift. Um, so that's how you can how you can do code behind right that code behind model if you'd like. Um, and we're probably going to want to move there as this functions block is now approaching more than a hundred lines of code. These things probably would fit better in that component base object. Hey, crows. Was told code behind should improve in the next one or two previews. Okay, cool. Almost there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, it's difficult to, to your do to address a problem. You did an internship, learned IT specialist. Now you only sit in support on the phone. Um, f uh, folks tell you you should go through two years before you change jobs. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. If you're good at what you're doing and you've got skills to prove and you've proven what you can do and you can and you know how to talk the talk, um, it's possible to change jobs. Possible. Not. It's. I. I would suggest talking. Uh, talking. Doing some interviews with a recruiter first. Make sure they say, "Oh yeah, we can get you placed somewhere else." Before you. Before you force that jump. And and put some pressure on your employer um, all right let me so I have let's see if this works right I, I mean I just threw a whole bunch of code in here maybe we should move it out into a component base class to go with it build errors all right yeah see this is it's not telling me what the actual errors are no this month doesn't exist what This month here. Oh. Um, because I've calculated this month there. Well, why don't we do this? Let's move that. And let's make this a date time. Right, so it's always... Um, and make that a get. No, stop it. No. Return that. There we go. Um, so this month is now a thing. Good. So I can now rename this with F2. And now it looks proper everywhere. Now it should work. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. 
Look at the landing before you jump. Yes, that's a good tip, Nalaj. Because, right, measure twice, cut once, when, especially when it comes to a job. When it comes to your career, double check everything before you talk to your current employer and say, yeah, I'm leaving. You don't want to get caught. Because if you try to leave and something happens and you can't, you're going to look really bad going back to them and saying, I want my job still. Um, okay, this layout is killing me over here. At least the two are side by side properly, but I'd like these things to be stacked. Right? Um, so this for the next week, that looks proper. So what if we call this, uh, let's call this, um, I'm going to create a recurring schedule for next week and let's call this, uh, uh June holiday. Right, maybe I'm taking a holiday for the... That's not how you spell holiday. Thank you. A cron pattern for the schedule. I want it my... All right, I'm going to need to cheat and go to... Right, there's like cron helper. Cron helper. Cron syntax for us humans. So I want this to happen uh, every day at midnight. Yes. So minutes. Um, so it's going to run on the zeroth minute. Right? If I do that. Every minute? No, I want it to run on the zeroth minute. Not at the start of every hour. But uh, every day of the week. Right. If I have it run, not at the start of every hour, but on the zeroth hour, at starting at midnight, and I want it to run all day long. Yeah. So I'm going to block the entire day as I'm on vacation. So I can copy that, right? So every day of the month, every month, every day of the week. So if I copy that. Uh, oops, wait, here, this one. So if I say that, I don't have a way to key in the duration yet. Mm, we're missing the duration field. All right, but that's my, right? I wanna say every day starting at midnight, I'm not available, right? Um, so let me close that. Yeah, close this. Here. Um, we need the duration. Hmm. And I also want these to be stacked. I don't want them to be side by side by side the way they are. Right? Hmm. That was weird. Well, wait a sec. Um, and th yeah, they are stacked like this. Yeah, figure it out later. Um, so start time and time. Um, Oh my gosh. Hey Fritz just popped by to cheer and hi. Hello. Keep up the great stream. Thank you so much, Organic IT. Holy crow. Whoa. Um thank you very much for that very kind cheer, Organic IT. I'm gonna I'll drop that cheer in. I have, we haven't had a cheer in a little bit here. Um let me drop that into uh the code that we're writing is down here under add new recurring schedule. Oh my goodness, a thousand bits from Organic IT. We'll make a donation to Veterans Who Code. And today is, what day is today? I knew what day today was. Today is the 23rd of June. Thank you very, very much. And 25 others in chat are going to get Pride emotes, thanks to Twitch's contributions to the Trevor Project this month. 25 of you just got cool little rainbow emotes. Thanks so much, Organic IT. I really appreciate you uh, sharing the love. Um, is there a reason uh, the UI has you enter cron syntax? Well, since it is for the vets, here is another 1,000. Whoa! Thank you so much for that. Yeah, we'll bump that up. Absolutely. Um, and I think... It, well, it, not only the vets, but also for the Trevor Project, uh, Twitch will make a donation over there. Thank you so much for that. That is very, very generous. 
25 more folks are going to get pride awards in chat. Wrath ZA. There you go with the rainbow wig. Off for some churching. Take care, Organic IT. We really appreciate you stopping by and sharing that love. Very cool. Oh, that's so kind. Um, I don't want folks to end up keying in a cron schedule. Yeah, Sean. Uh, I'm quite happy to see that. That's very generous. Um, eventually, I don't... I. I will remove the need for folks to key in a Quran schedule. Um, duration for each repeat. There we go. For each item. Each recurring item. There we go. Um, eventually, I, I don't want you to key that in, but just to get a control on the screen so we can make sure that we're saving and loading them properly, this works will build an appropriate user interface to generate that cron schedule later. Get it, make it work, make it pretty later. Make it fast. Make it a drat. What do we got going on here? Just making sure that's everything's okay there. Good. All right. What did we What did we break now? Can I convert string to time span? <sighs> okay. So we can't bind to duration, but we did that with times here. Oh, it's because it's text. Um, how do we make that a time span? Right. It's not going to be like. Time feels weird there. Let's see if that works. Otherwise, I might have to bind to some other field and convert it to a time span. Yeah, it's not going to work. Um, all right, so let's do this. Let me just make sure. Um, checking in Mrs. C Sharp Fritz is texting. Um, There we go. All right, everything sounds fine there. So let's jump over here. So if we have a string and we call this duration text, uh, get set. Um, I wanna mark this as, it's n a, a don't scaffold, right? Isn't it no scaffold or scaffold false? Right, scaffold column. false. I don't want it to create a column for this, but um, right when you go to get it, let's return duration to string. When you set something, uh, no, duration, there we go equals value, uh, can we do time span? Time span, is there a time span dot parse? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> value. All right, so now if we're, if we bind against duration text, so now that should work better and save things properly, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. let me see. There were a couple of comments and things here. Regardless of Blazor, building a full stack DB API and front end is a better long term choice than focusing on single tech choice for building front ends. Um, wow, what did I miss? Wrath ZA says, go to a local code meetup, talk to people. That's how you find opportunities. Yes, that's a good uh, idea. Namasri asks, isn't Angular more marketable skill compared to Razor? Um, well, hang on. Razor and Blazor, two different things. Angular has been around for a while. Yes. Um, however, Angular has some issues. Um, Angular and .NET Core combo. 
would be killer. It is nice. It is possible. Um, I want to continue to show bleeding edge stuff, preview stuff that folks are working on. We have done Angular. Have we done Angular? We haven't done Angular on stream. Um, but the problem, the problem, the concern that I have with Angular. Oh, we broke something here. Here we go. Column duration text does not exist. I told you not to scaffold it. I put the I put the scaffold false deal on there. It shouldn't have scaffolded. it. See that? Shouldn't have done anything with that. Um, so, to finish the point, my point about Angular, um, Angular is right. It's a lot of uh, JavaScript. There's a lot going on there. It's a completely different way of thinking, and it takes you outside of right. You end up doing a. a a mental shift if you're doing .NET to get into Angular. Um, doable. A lot of folks are very successful with it. There's great templates to use Angular with .NET. Um, I want to use Blazor. I want to try and show it. Not mapped. Is that what I'm not doing correctly here? All right. Yeah, I put the wrong attribute there. Thank you, Wrath. Um, so that's that's why one of the reasons I'm preferring not to use it here. But full stack using the same technology is a, it, it feels better, right? And that's why a lot of folks use Node, so they can have Node and Angular doing all the things in one technology, back to front to back in their application. Uh, will you need two fields to make a duration? No, because my, check it out, Sean. Um, the cron pattern specifies when the when the schedule item starts. The duration specifies how long it is and consequently when it ends. One true blue. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. Uh, the CEO of Fritz Corp. Yes, I am. That's me. All right. Um, so the duration now. Let's see. That should work properly, which means I should be able to key in a schedule item for every day of the week and specify uh, 24 hours in duration. And hopefully, hopefully, we'll get that to work, right? Or maybe eight hours or something like that. So click through the availability deal here. There we go. All right, so name of it, if we call this June holiday. Uh, okay, the cron pattern was Right, it was zero, zero, star, star, star. Was that it? What was the uh, cron helper? Right? So we changed this to zero. So at the start, at the zero with minute of midnight. Yeah. We'll, um. And we'll run for 24 hours. So it'll be all day. Uh, it'll be starting at midnight all day long. Not 24.0. What the heck are you doing? Like that. Um, starting from the 23rd, going through the 30th. And we'll call it June holiday. Let's see if this works. Did it do something? I can't tell. Um, is it over here? Right? I can't tell. Did it write something into the database? Why can't I tell? Um, so this is, our database is running inside of Docker. Um, right, if I run a Docker PS, you can see there it is, resource management. So if I uh, do a Docker exec IT on resource management, and run bash, that'll drop me in there. Um, I can run psql, postgres. Ooh, hey. Um, show me my tables. There's recurring schedule, okay. So let's select star from recurring schedule. 
Cool, it created it. All right, so we saved our schedule item. It's there, but it doesn't look like it replayed, right? It doesn't look like, there we go. Did you, did you see it? It it colored everything in here. Ooh, okay. Ooh, that's. But if I click off somewhere else, but that's right. And if I click over here, right nine, that's right. That's not positioned right. So all right, we have another thing to put onto that bug about the day view. If I have something that starts outside of the viewable area, <laughs> it's overlaid in the wrong place. In fact, I could even, I could take a screenshot of that. Let's take a screenshot. Take a screenshot. Let's paste that in. Um, where'd, it, where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. It's there. Um, I don't even... I don't even uh, need to show the whole thing, right? I can just do that. Let's go back over to here. Um, where was it? There we go. When appointments exist outside the, uh, the window, um, they're placed incorrectly. Right. They're also not sized correctly. Uh, is that Jamon? Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Uh, why does Twitter have to be so toxic? Um, don't know, Lennon, and I appreciate the Fierce Kittens emotes there. Very nice. So, thank you for the follow. Um, Alright. So, I've got more about that issue logged. So, we'll figure that out. But it is saving. It's just not refreshing right away. Um, so, what am I not doing during the refresh? Right? And this will put us right at the end of time together here today. Uh, da -da -da -da. So, add new recurring schedule. So, we clear... Right, we save the changes here. We're clearing the time slots. Um, schedule manager, expand the time slots. And we're notifying everything that the schedule's been updated. Ah. In notifying that the schedule's been updated, Those other things aren't receiving the updated expanded schedule. It hasn't been passed through to them. The expanded schedule, I think we need to move down into the schedule state. Um, that Twitch is only a gaming website and other people should find it. That's not right. In fact, Twitch itself is trying to do more outside of just gaming. Um, take the NFL, for example. They're bringing live sports into Twitch. It was there last season. It's going to be there this season. Um, yeah. There's a lot more going on there. A lot of folks that are doing a lot more than just games on Twitch. So, take the NFL. All right, all right. I see what you... I Okay. Um, let's do this. I don't think we need the expanded schedule object, but I do think we need these things. So I'm going to get rid of this object and let's consolidate this into schedule state, right? Let's add a property here for the time slots, right? Um, ugh, ugh. So when schedule is updated, when the schedule is updated, I should start the manager here over, over mm, I don't know over what range to calculate it. Hmm. 
Um, so I deleted the expanded schedule object. Let me get rid of that here as well. Um, maybe I put a method over here. Yeah, let's put a method over here for expanding the schedule. Um, public void expand schedule. Uh, date time uh, min start date date time max end date and let's move that expansion logic into there which means I can also get rid of this That's fine. Fairy wings! With the boop. Thank you so much. Great to see you. Make sure you check out Fairy Wings stream. She's, uh... She's been doing some really fun things in Minecraft recently. Um, building and exploring. I, I always like watching Minecraft just because it's kind of like... It's like watching living Legos run around. Disnubs just resubscribed for two months. Thanks so much for the resub. Uh, I appreciate it, Diz. And uh, we'll make a donation to Vets Who Code. Uh, Alan Starkeeper. Yeah. So, Fairy Wings also does chain mailing live, building things, doing crafting, um, some of those other things besides just, uh, just gaming. Um, really cool to watch. Very interesting craft that she does. Building, building chainmail jewelry, uh, live with a couple pairs of pliers and and uh, metal rings. Really cool stuff. Uh, little E Blaster is streaming Minecraft now. Oh man, that's cool, Rambling Geek. Very cool. So let me finish moving. Hey, Caparino G Gr, good to see you. And a lot of cuss words. Yes, Fairy Wings is a little bit. Uh, Isn't a family-friendly stream. I'll just leave it at that. All right, so I'm going to put this in here, and I will say, uh, let's do a time slots dot clear, so we make sure that's cleared out. Yes, colorful. That's a good way to put it. Very colorful. Um, schedule, and I will say min start date. To, uh, max end date. Good. Schedule manager doesn't know what that is. I need my using statement and boom goes the dynamite. Okay. Um, what do we take? What do you say we take? Let's have an override here. Public void expand schedule. And if you don't specify a schedule, then let's go, let's uh, call expand schedule and we'll pass in uh, select, selected date, um, add months minus two to uh, selected date, add months two. Uh, no, we did three. Right, so we'll go out. Got a nice block around that. So we can calculate your schedules, which means now, down here, when the event fires, um, <laughs> schedule updated. I can call expand schedule and force that. Wow, is that DJ Almo Cruz Jr. Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. Um, uh, take care, Lannon. Um, we'll eventually raid her stream in just a minute. We're wrapping up here. I want to finish pulling out... Where was it? Yeah, so here on availability, I should now have this. I can remove that stuff 
And I can remove that. Because expanded schedule is not a thing anymore. And it'll just recalculate over in the in the thing, in the place. Uh, here we go. What's it upset about? Expanded schedule on day view and day picker. All right, so now instead of this, I can say my schedule state. And it still has the time slots object. There it goes. And I need to do the same thing here. And that should work. Uh, just realize SGDQ. Oh yeah, the summer game's done quick, starts soon. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. And... Cool. If I click through to availability, this should work. And it's not showing those. It didn't expand the schedule, is what it didn't do. Okay. Um, when it's... So on the availability screen... Here. Right when... <laughs> on init. Here. I need to tell it to expand the schedule. Try it one more time. Let's see if we can get this. Um... Here we go. All right, availability, and there we go. Now it's played out properly. Cool, all right. And it does show those that are in the wrong place, but it works. It's doing, it's doing it, and we'll come back now, and we'll fix the layout there. We'll fix the layout over here, do a little user interface work next time. Cool. All right, let's wrap up. Let's call it a day here. Fire up our Mario sound. There it is. Let's get everything committed in here. Um, yep, I deleted some files there. We'll commit. And um, uh, now saving recurring schedules. It's not easy to write a recurring schedule, but you can do it. We'll make that better. We'll improve it as we uh, move along here. So we'll push that change up, and I'll keep, I'm going to keep that in my private repository until I finish building a little bit of the user interface around that. I uh, like the salt and pepper reference there, Surly Dev. Thanks so much. Um, all right. So that's pushed out. That's available. So I think we accomplished some pretty neat things here today. We got a little bit of our user interface cleared up. We've got our schedule now for a recurring schedule being expanded and that expanded schedule is now being consumed by our user interface components. This way, as we enhance our schedule going forward, that calculation of what a schedule is can be placed in one place. We can add different calculations to that. We can do different things with that schedule and make it all appear in one place, from one place. We've added then a layer of abstraction to our interactions. We're not working directly with just a schedule object. That's pretty cool. I think we're, we've moved in the right place so that we can expand and we can grow our application in the future. All the code's available on GitHub. You've seen where it is, it's out there under Fritz and Friends slash resource management, and you can find my fork in the C-Sharp Fritz repository, uh, C-Sharp Fritz organization on GitHub. This video, like my other videos, will be available on YouTube uh, tomorrow, a little bit later in the week. I hope you come back and join me on Tuesday, Tuesday evening. I'm going to be updating the schedule Tuesday evening, 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Pacific. My guests will be Michaela Hutchinson and Cody Beyer from the Visual Studio for Mac team. It's Sunday morning. It's time to set up for our next raid. Thanks so much for joining me. Chat room. There's our raid call. Copy out. 
that first line of text if you're a subscriber with the raid bots. If you're not a subscriber, that's okay. Grab the second line of text and we're gonna get ready to raid. It's Sunday morning, we always raid. No opcat. Thanks so much for, for joining us, everybody. Um, why does it have follower? Oh, whatever. I really appreciate you joining me. I look forward to seeing you on Tuesday. I hope you have a great week ahead of you, and I'll see you then. Make sure you grab that raid call so we can say hello to our friend Suze. She always loves it when we drop in and we announce our presence. Take care, everyone.